In this video, I'm going to show you how to capture beautiful, high-quality portraits with your iPhone. I'll show you how to do this both using the regular camera of your iPhone, as well as using portrait mode, which is a really advanced feature designed specifically for capturing the best portrait photos possible. I'll also share with you some tips and techniques for how to use light in your portrait photos and how to make sure your subject looks great so that you can get the best images possible. You'll see that we have a sunny day and for portraits, it's actually bad news. That sun is going to cast some really harsh shadows on the face of my subject. So that creates a real challenge for portrait photography. So if you can, try to choose a cloudy day for your portrait shoots. Cloudy is not an option. You'll have to find shade or you'll have to wait for the golden hour when the beautiful evening light can actually work really great for your portraits. So let me pick up my iPhone and let me show you why that sun can be such a big problem. So right now you'll see that I've framed up this portrait photo and I like this background, but what I don't like is the light. You notice that as my wife is looking directly at me, the sun is hitting her face from the side. But the problem is that this is direct sunlight and that light is really hard. And we have some really harsh shadows that illuminate a part of her face and then there are other parts that are completely dark. So that doesn't really work for me. Another reason why this light can be really challenging is if your subject is looking directly at it. So that's a big no-no in portrait photography. So if I ask my wife to now look to her left, you'll see that she's squinting and that's because it's an uncomfortable position I'm asking her to take. So while I like this background and I think this wall has a lot of potential for portrait photography, it's not the right light here. I think we should be able to find another part of this building that's going to be in shadow, and hopefully that's gonna work better for portraits. Let's take a look. When you're taking portrait photos, generally speaking, those shots are all about the person. It's all about their face. And because of that, it's a good idea to position your portrait subjects against a background that's relatively simple or non-distracting. Now, when I open up my camera, by default, it has the 1x, the wide angle lens. And wide angle isn't the ideal angle for portrait photography. Now you'll see that as I start to get closer, two things are happening. One, my subject is kind of getting uncomfortable because I'm so close to her. But even more importantly, if you look carefully at the screen, you'll see that there are some kind of distortions happening. It's just not a pleasing way to show a person's face. So I'm gonna step back again and instead of shooting with that 1x, I'm gonna to switch to my 2x, my telephoto. That is immediately so much better. I'm much further from my subject, so she can feel more comfortable, and that definitely helps. But more importantly, her face isn't distorted anymore. And that's because that 2x, that telephoto perspective, it's much closer to a natural perspective in a photo than that wide angle. Now, if you don't have a telephoto lens, then you're either going to get photos that are more distorted, or you're gonna to have to step further back to reduce the effects of that distortion. Or even better, you could buy an add-on telephoto lens that you screw on to the back of your iPhone. If you go down that route, then Sandmark and Moment are the two companies that make the best telephoto lenses for iPhone. I'm finally happy with everything we have here, so I'm gonna take some photos. One of the keys to getting those perfect portrait photos is to just take a lot of them and to make sure that they're not exactly the same. So I'm gonna ask my wife to make some more movements. And in general, just experimenting with different poses, different angles is a good thing to do when you're taking portraits. I like this shot a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter. I think I got the shot I was looking for. So this is how you can take beautiful portrait photos without actually using the portrait mode. So here we are on a different day on this beautiful beach. First of all, it is a colder day, but beyond that, we also have some wind here. And that wind, could actually be a good thing for us because that means that the hair of my subject is going to blow in the wind and that can look really interesting in photos. The one thing we haven't yet used is the portrait mode of the iPhone. 
So the latest iPhone models come with a really powerful feature called the portrait mode. And with the portrait mode, you can create a depth of field effect. In other words, you can blur the background behind your portrait subjects so that only their face is gonna be sharp and in focus, but everything that's behind them is gonna be blurred out. That works really well for portrait photos. And with each new iPhone generation, Apple is improving it. So as I'm gonna do this demonstration, you might see some options that aren't available to you if you have an older iPhone. That's just something to keep in mind. So the first thing I need to do is activate the portrait mode. So I can do that by tapping where it says portrait at the bottom left. And when that natural light is in yellow, that means that the portrait mode has been successfully activated. Now, another thing you'll see is that there's kind of a square box around the face of my subject. That just means that the portrait mode has set focus on the face of my subject while blurring out the background. Now, there are many other options inside the portrait mode, so let me quickly walk you through those. On the left-hand side, you'll see this thing that kind of looks like a cube. That's natural light. That's the option I have selected right now. Let me show you the next option. So to do that, I can tap my finger here on the left side and I swipe my finger up until the next option is selected. This is called Studio Light. With Studio Light, the iPhone digitally simulates the kind of lighting I'd get in a photo studio. So you'll see that now the face of my subject is brightly illuminated in a really beautiful way. Let's take a quick shot. All right, next up, we have contour light. This is essentially amplify the facial features of my subject. This is another option I often like to use. And you'll see that as the wind keeps blowing, the hair of my wife is being blown by that wind. And that actually looks really interesting. Now, let's go to the next option. That's stage light. You can already see what it looks like. It's supposed to emulate the effect you'd get if you were illuminated on a dark stage. But to me, this is a gimmick. I've never found use for it and it's not very accurate. So I'm personally not a big fan of stage light. Next up, we have stage light mono, which is essentially the same thing. And now the image is also in black and white. I also don't use this effect very much. And finally, we have high key light mono. So this simulates a high key portrait. It's kind of the opposite of stage light. So this does look better than the stage light options, but still it's not always accurate and it sometimes creates some strange artifacts. But I like high key just a bit better. So I'm gonna grab a shot. What I'm gonna do is go back to studio light, which is actually my favorite option of all. There are a couple of more options I'd like to quickly show you. At the bottom right hand corner, you'll see this icon that kind of looks like a hexagon. I'm going to tap my finger there. And now on the left, the slider has appeared, which allows me to control the strength of the studio light effect. By default, the slider is set to 50. But if I increase the value all the way up to 90 or so, you'll see that that light effect becomes much stronger. But at 90, unfortunately, this effect is too strong and this no longer looks natural. So I got to dial this down a little bit. I think a value near 60 is what I'm looking for. Now, next to this icon at the bottom right, we have another option that says F. So as I tap there, another slider comes up and this allows me to change the F stop of the photo I'm going to take. Now, if you know what an F stop is coming from DSLR photography, then this isn't quite the same thing. The iPhone has a fixed aperture. So this is again, a digital simulation. But as I move that slider, what I can do is change how much background blur there's going to be. And if you want more background blur, you simply need to make that number lower. If I go all the way to F1.4, you pretty much cannot tell that there's C behind my subject. So this is definitely too strong. I'm going to have to increase the F value. I think something like F2.2 is going to work here. So I'm going to quickly grab a shot. Now I got these shots and they turned out okay, but if I want to capture something truly exceptional, I can't just take a couple of shots and expect that they're going to be perfect. So what I want to do now is experiment with a couple of different angles and a couple of different poses for my subject. And throughout this whole process, you got to keep communicating with your subject. 
So this has to be kind of like a dialogue. And in general, a great technique to get your subject to relax and to stop worrying about the way they look is to actually give them some kind of prop. Anything that would make your subject feel comfortable and that would add to the story of the photo. I'm gonna ask you to face that way with your whole body, just like that. And I'm gonna try to take a shot, this time from a slightly different angle. This is gonna be a profile shot. And look at where I'm placing her eyes, very close to that top grid line, and that's not an accident. Let's see what else we can capture, this time without that hat. All right, we've gotten a lot of shots at this spot with the sea and those clouds in the background. But let's see if we can change up the background. Now, as you're thinking about where to position your subject against the background, it's really important that your subject maintains some distance from whatever is behind them. Because when you're shooting with that portrait mode, that portrait mode is gonna keep your subject sharp, but it needs to be able to know where the background is. So that background has to be at some distance behind the subject. Just now that light is starting to come out. Now you'll see that the right side of her face is illuminated and it adds a bit of depth to the picture. Now look at how that wind is blowing her hair. And I think that's gonna be the last shot for tonight. It captured so many portrait photos. But the one thing I haven't yet shown you how to do is actually changing the portrait mode settings after the image is already captured. Let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna start by tapping the edit icon at top right. Here I can actually change everything I wanna change about this image. So at the top, you'll see it says portrait. If I tap that portrait, I'm actually disabling portrait mode. And you can see what the shot would look like if I didn't have portrait mode at all. And it clearly doesn't look as good. So I'm gonna turn that portrait mode back on. Now towards the bottom of the screen, we have the same options that you had when we were first setting up portrait mode. We have the slider, and that's gonna be the strength of studio light. And finally, at the top where it says F2.2, is where I can change the strength of that background blur effect. And this way, I can adjust any of the portrait mode photos that I've already captured after the fact. I don't have to worry about changing all those settings as I'm shooting. I'll just pick one set of settings that I know works well. I'll take a whole bunch of photos, and later on, once I've found an image that I really like, I can simply go in and change those settings. All right, it's been a long video, and it's been a long day, but there's a lesson in that. Because if I simply captured a couple of shots when we were right there on the beach, and if that was all I did, then I definitely wouldn't get those special portrait photos that I was dreaming about. But because we had that patience and perseverance, we got those truly incredible shots. And thanks to the portrait mode, I can blur the background and I can even artificially create the kind of light that normally I'd only get in a photo studio. That's the power of portrait mode and that's how you can capture some truly incredible portrait images with your iPhone. This video was a free preview of my iPhone Photo Academy online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to take stunning photos with your iPhone. So if you'd like to take the kind of photos that will leave your friends and family speechless, please take a look at the full version of iPhone Photo Academy. You'll find a link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link right now and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.